All right. Next up, we have Tom Samstag talking about the uh, Infocon DB. Please welcome Tom. Hi. Uh, whatever. Um, welcome. I'm happy to announce something that I hope will be a, a good resource for the community. Um, Infocon DB. So first off, uh, I have a quick disclaimer. I'm going to talk a little bit about stats of presentations, uh, how many presentations different people have. Everything is as of the current state of the database, which is not complete. Uh, if, if the database does not represent your years of pre presentation history, uh, don't be offended. Uh, nothing was omitted intentionally. Things just haven't been uh, cataloged yet. Uh, everything's far from complete. So with that said, uh, who am I? My name is Tom Samstag. I go by Technical Tom or Tech on IRC. I am a principal security engineer at Security Innovation. Uh, we are a security firm specializing in application security. Uh, always looking for good engineers, especially in the Seattle area. So if you understand how software works and know how to break it, uh, check us out. Uh, also, check out canyouhack.us. It's a cool little challenge site that we have for uh, recruiting, but it should be fun even if you're not interested in a job. Uh, fun little CTF type thing. I also hang out with the NEG9 crew. Uh, I am part of the core NEG9 staff. Uh, we are a hacker group that is now primarily uh, located in Seattle. Uh, we've been doing CTFs for a long time. And we apparently accidentally won Hacker Jeopardy last night. Still trying to figure out how that happened. Uh, so yeah, normally I'd end my about me there. But we need a little bit more background here. Uh, so I like cons. I like hacker cons. Uh, I like attending hacker cons. Um, this is my current badge collection. It's not as extensive as I'm sure many of yours are. Um, but I'm at the point where I'm afraid to try new conferences because I know if I do, it'll be added to my must attend every year list. Um, I, I just really like attending cons uh, where my friends are the ones that get back from DEF CON talking about how they're never going to go to Vegas again. Um, I am the one who's already planning next year and, and how to make next year even better. I also enjoy watching videos of conference presentations. Uh, if you also enjoy watching presentations from conferences, I hope you, you know of the site infocon.org. Uh, this is an amazing resource. It's built out of the Dark Tangents project, uh, the Data Duplication Village, uh, that originally was hosted at DEF CON. And people came to him and said, we want access to this outside of DEF CON. So this is the internet-facing version of the Data Duplication Village, where he has terabytes of media from conferences going back through the hacker history. So it's a great resource, but once you start using it, you realize it's really just a directory structure of files. It's, it's just like browsing a, a, an open directory structure. So at the same time that I am getting really into watching stuff on Infocon, um, I also watch a lot of TV. And I'm at home watching TV with my Kodi Media Center. And I love how it talks to the TV DB. And it displays all kinds of me metadata about the, the shows that I'm going to watch. It shows synopsis and actors and actor bios and all of that. And so, those combined, both Infocon and the way that Cody displays that, that metadata, that's kind of what inspired me to start InfoconDB.org. Um, so InfoconDB.org, I've been selling it as IMDB for hacker cons. As of yesterday morning, it's live, publicly available, InfoconDB.org. Uh, that's a snapshot of the, the front page as of when I made these slides yesterday. Um, so I'm probably losing some of you right now because you're just going to start browsing it, and I'm, I'm fine with that. But we, we want to talk a little bit about what went into making it thus far, because this is an ongoing project. 
So while making this, this site and this database and this huge amount of data and curating it, I realized that a lot of my time was kind of split among four different goals. And for these four different goals are all vying for my time. They're all competing with each other. And only by balancing the four of them am I able to make this site really what I want. Uh, the four goals are the platform, that's the technology behind the website itself, making it a good UI, making it usable, uh, and then also the, the admin stuff on the back end that let me manage the site and manage all of the other goals appropriately. There's coverage, getting as many cons as possible. So getting the data from every con that's happened. Turns out there's been a few conferences in the past couple years. Um, the third goal is complete. Make sure the data is complete. Make sure that every conference that I have indexed and every presentation at every conference has as many of the data fields populated as possible. Um, and the fourth goal is to make it accurate. Make sure that everything that I, I am displaying is as accurate and true to what actually happened as possible. So going through those goals, uh, the platform. This is actually the easiest of them. Um, right on the about page, I give a little bit of a description about what technology goes into it. It's a simple Django web app uh, powered by Postgres on Docker, hosted by DigitalOcean. The technology behind it is relatively straightforward. Uh, moving on, though, to coverage. So this is, again, trying to, to bring in the data from as many conferences as possible, all of the conferences eventually. Uh, so. There's several options depending on how the conference has their data. The best option is if the conference has their data in structured data. So uh, if, the, web, if the, the website of the conference used FRAB, similar to how uh, TorCon this year did and TorCamp um, before it. And then another third party option that some conferences have used is called Sketch. And these, these options are great because I can just download the the, the JSON files ingest it all, matter of seconds. Unfortunately, they're, the, they're not the most common option that I've been able to do. Uh, the most common option is web scraping. Um, I have to preface this with a little bit of a trigger warning here. Uh, you may be offended by the next, uh, the next point here. Uh, I am doing web scraping with regular expressions. Uh, I know that may upset some of you, and you'll say, why not use something like beautiful soup? And in all honesty, I tried to go that route. I'm looking at web pages for conferences that were done in the 90s or earlier. All of these things are so horribly inconsistent, even within the page, that trying to do any kind of a scraping, taking into account the HTML markup, doomed to fail. So actually, most of the data in InfoconDB right now was scraped with regular expressions off of web pages. Sorry if that upsets you. Um, so then the, the, the next problem that we run into is there are plenty of conferences that don't have archives. Uh, DEF CON is amazing because you can go and you can view the website for DEF CON 1. Well, I don't know if DEF CON 1 had a website, but you can go back to DEF CON 2, 3, and see the web page as it existed, as they published it then. Uh, not all conferences have that. A lot of them are say a WordPress website where slash schedule is the schedule for the year, and then after that conference, they change schedule, and that content is lost. Um, a lot of times, I, I've been relying on the Internet Archive, but that's still hoping that the Internet Archive spidered that site at the right time of the year to get that content. And in lots of cases, that hasn't been the case. Some of this content just isn't available on the website anymore. Um, and that leads to the third, or the, the next potential. Uh, I, I actually have to credit my wife for this one. Uh, DEF CON, or I'm sorry, TORCON 13. The Internet Archive failed to get any program, dis any descriptions of any of the talks. My wife actually volunteered to manually transcribe the paper program. Uh, and that's how all of the, the descriptions for TORCON 13 are in here. And uh, that might be an ongoing thread, depending on uh, what what the conference organizers are able to scrape up from their archives. Uh, and then in, in, in the future, uh, especially in the coming months and year, uh, 
hopefully I'll be reaching out to more conference organizers and seeing what they have, what, what they have digital archives of their past stuff, uh, maybe working out a way that I can g get any structured data that they have. I don't care what format it is, I can make it work. Anything is better than writing regex to scrape web pages or typing programs. So that's the second goal. The third one is complete. Uh, this is making sure that every data point that can have a value does. Uh, so when you're scraping all this data in mass, uh, a lot of things can fall through the cracks. Uh, I've got backend scripts that find missing data. Uh, so one example of that is at the bottom of the front page, there's this box saying, hey, do you want to help? Does GERCON 2017 have a conference YouTube playlist URL? And what that is is every time the main page is loaded, it randomly finds a data point for a conference that it doesn't have a value for and asks the user, hey, can you help me here? Um, so that's just the very first example of user interaction. Hopefully in the future, that will expand to, to elicit more help from users. But in addition to that, for completeness, I have scripts in the back end that help find schedule holes. So I know where, when every presentation was, I know what room it's in, find the holes for me. Maybe that, that presentation just didn't get, didn't get scraped properly. Um, I have automated scripts for YouTube playlist and infocon.org uh, matching of videos to presentations. So I point it at a YouTube playlist for a conference and it uses uh, YouTube DL, which uh, most of us use just for downloading things from YouTube, but it's also handy for getting the metadata from a playlist. And an awesome Python library called Fuzzy Wuzzy from uh, SeatGeek for fuzzy string matching. And it goes through and figures out which presentations match which uh, videos and does all of that automatedly. Um, I'm also automated, automatedly uh, extracting Twitter handles from people. Uh, one of the, the safeguards for that is going through and extracting anything that looks like a Twitter handle, but then making sure it's not only unique for that user, for that presenter, but also pinging Twitter to make sure it's a valid Twitter handle, that kind of stuff. So all those speak to completeness but then just filling in a value for every piece of data uh, doesn't help if we don't also stress accuracy. Uh, there's several ways to, to, to focus on accuracy. One thing you'll notice as you browse the site is for each presenter, I store two fields, one for name and one for handle. An interesting uh, side effect of our community. Uh, name doesn't have to be a legal name, uh, but it's a value that's more used like your name and a handle is more used like your handle. Uh, my, my classic example of this is Cheshire Catalyst, uh, is his handle. And when asked what his name is, he says Richard Cheshire. Now that's not his legal name, and he's upfront about that, but that's his name to the hacker community. So there are scripts right now that look at uh, names and try to extract which part is a name versus a handle in all of the many ways that, ha that hacker cons have credited people, whether it be name and then parenthesis handle or name slash, name dash, AKAs, uh, every, every way that you can imagine it's been done by some conference. Uh, there's also a lot of work in presenter deduping. So uh, every way that a presenter's name can be mangled or uh, presented has been done. Uh, my best example of this is Marsha Hoffman from the EFF. Uh, does a lot of work in the hacker community. Uh, this is her list of credits on the page as of uh, yesterday. And we see we have almost every variation of number of Fs and number of Ns in her name, even as recent as 2014. Uh, so finding these, these duplication of, of data and the, er the slight errors that are introduced and coalescing those people. Um, future user interaction is gonna be a big part of this. A uh, planned feature for the, the hopefully near future is going to be a way of allowing people who are browsing the site to flag inaccurate data. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a Wikipedia model anytime soon where anybody can edit anything, but allowing users to say, hey, this doesn't look right, or this is obviously a scraping error, 
this person's name shouldn't have HTML in it, uh, that's going to be the next step of allowing the users to help make this a better site. So those were the four kind of goals that I was that I was using to steer my development in this. Um, the other the other interesting thing that I wanted to, to throw out here and why this is worth me being on stage and not just saying go check out this website, there's a couple interesting findings. Uh, so I announced on Twitter a few days ago that if anybody was able to guess the most prolific, uh, the, the, the presenter who has had the most credits to their name, uh, I'd give a free bottle of booze to whoever could guess first. And surprisingly, nobody get. Kind of surprisingly, nobody guessed. I kind of put it out there because I thought it would be difficult for anybody to guess because you all, everybody thinks of the, the presenters that they see, that they remember, that are, that are active in the hacker community, but they forget some people. So this is currently the top most pro prolific presenters. And you see it's actually Kurt Opsahl from the EFF who does at least one Ask the EFF panel every DEF CON and at, sometimes two or three more presentations every year. Nobody guessed them. Uh, but then we, we see a lot of the common names that we'd expect. Uh, now, this is one of those things that, again, this is as of the, the data that I have. This is going to change over time. And it's displayed dynamically on the front page. Uh, another interesting piece of, of tidbit trivia, uh, the 20 plus year club. So I looked at everybody who was in the database who had more than one presentation and sorted them by the duration between their first presentation and their last presentation. And we actually have people who are still presenting today who have been at this for well over 20 years. And I thought I'd just share that list with you uh, here. Of course, Jeff Moss, Dark Tangent, he's been, uh, he's been doing this for a little while. Manuel Goldstein. So we start to see a lot of the, the people who are actually been active in conference organization at the top. Matt Blaze, another name that you should all recognize. And then, let's see, Kingpin, Mudge, Weld Pond, Space Rogue. They just did a panel at DEF CON, so we see a lot of that. But so the, these, what was it, 12 people have all been at, in this, active in this community for over 20 years. Uh, this is information that you, that you can't really get a good grasp of in, until you start amassing this amount of data and actually being able to pull interesting statistics out of it. So what's next for InfoconDB? So I'm, I'm releasing it today. I just made it, act, I made it publicly accessible as of yesterday. Uh, it's been in active development for about a year now. So what's next? So First, obviously, making sure that it can actually survive all of you hitting it. Uh, I've been the only one using the site for a while, so uh, making sure that you guys don't bring it down will be a good first step. So far, it seems uh, like it's working. Um, one early piece of feedback I had uh, given to me was uh, not just reinforcing the presenters that are very active, uh, not just reinforcing the rock star mentality, but also be more inviting. So uh, one of the next new features is going to be a, a page highlighting new presenters. People are presenting for the first time this year. Uh, as a, as a, because, I mean, it doesn't matter if you're Dan Kaminsky presenting, you know, while not fully cognizant or, uh, you know, doing your 20th presentation or you're up here for the very first time, it takes a lot of, of guts to get up here and we need to, to encourage people to uh, share their, their wealth of knowledge and, uh, and, and be active in this community. So uh, highlighting people who are up here for the first time. Um, advanced random presentation. So there's, there's a page, uh, link on the front page for a random presentation. And so one of the upcoming features will be an advanced version of that. Uh, for instance, watching a video at, on your lunch break. So you asking the site, give me a random presentation with a YouTube link done in the past five years, uh, under 30 minutes, and maybe about this subject matter. Uh, tagging is uh, another feature that's going to be a lot of work. Uh, the beginnings of it are already there. You'll see it on some pages, uh, but it's not exposed very well yet, and it's not, the data is not populated yet. But being able to tag subject matter so that we can see uh, so that you can actually do a deep dive into, into something that interests you. 
uh, user data error flagging. That's kind of what I was talking about earlier, allowing users to help curate this data, make it, uh, make it accurate, and help this to, to continue to be a good resource. Um, API access is something that's uh, high on my list. It kind of speaks to why I did this in the first place, um, but allowing people to access this for whatever cool projects that they have ideas for. Uh, I've already seen, since I made this public, somebody scraping or in, uh, crawling the page that isn't a, a search engine that I recognize, so somebody obviously wants to get all this data. Might as well make it easy for them. And some other ideas about ranking, uh, popular presentation, some way to, to uh, allow people to see that must-see presentation. So that's all I've got for you in this presentation, but unlike most uh, presentations up here, this isn't the end of the story for, for this project. This is just the beginning. So I'm releasing infocondb.org to all of you, to the community. Um, I want it to be a good resource. Feel free to drop me any, con any, any uh, comments that you have, any feedback, any bugs. Um, I can be reached, well, I can be reached. Uh, <laughs> if you go to InfoConDB, go to the About page, there's a feedback form with email, and uh, feel free to check it out and get back to me. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. It is powered by Postgres. So yes, a SQL database. Any questions? Is this going to remain uh, non-commercial or non-independent? Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, this is a this is a a project of love that that I've spent a year on. Uh, I, I don't foresee anybody wanting it. I don't foresee me giving it to anybody. Uh, much, much, much to the, the uh, annoyance probably of my wife uh, for the amount of time I have spent on it and the time I will continue to spend on it. But yes, this is, this is a project of the communities, I think. So I, I have been focusing mostly on data of cons that have already happened. Uh, I don't want to be the... Uh, these are the conferences this year uh, web page. I have seen too many of those come and go. Uh, it's a hard task to try to be that timely with data. Um, I, I'm looking more for the archive. Um, that said, I did make sure to get this TorCon in before th this TorCon started, because it'd be kind of silly to not be able to look up this con. Uh, but yeah, the focus is more on an archive of the past than uh, make sure you go to these cons in the future. I'm not rolling it out, though. Yes? Thoughts or plans on open sourcing the platform source code? Um, yes. Uh, the question was about open sourcing it. Um, it. It's an idea. It's something I've thought of. It's less a focus because it's a service, uh, but I haven't rolled it out. Uh, it was more about making it functional to this point at this time. In the back. Qualifies a conference from making the list? Um, yeah, that, that's a good question. Uh, he asked what, what qualifies or disqualifies a conference from making the list. Um, I've largely been focused on the obvious hacker cons, and there are so many of them that uh, it's not like I am sitting around waiting for the next conference to happen. Uh, I am, at least as of now, focusing on security related conferences, hopefully, not. Or, or less of a focus on uh, the more busy side of things and focusing more on the hacker side of things. Um, that may change in the future, though. Uh, right now, it's largely been ad hoc. Uh, a lot of it's going to be, who can I most easily get the most bang for my buck in scraping, just because there's 30 years worth of hacker history to try to import here. Yes? Have you looked at past similar efforts and what was the positive work you um, Yeah, I, so I tried to find similar, uh, similar sites before starting this. Trust me, I did not want another project on my plate. I've got plenty of unfinished projects already. 
Uh, I wasn't able to find any until a good way through development. I found another one. Uh, it was not easy to find. And in my personal opinion, I feel that maybe they spent more effort on uh, getting every conference and less effort on uh, the, the accuracy and the completeness side of things. So uh, for me, it didn't quite meet my priorities. Uh, that said, it it was the only instance I have found that uh, was trying to do exactly this. Um, there are other sites out there that try to do the database of conferences, uh, mostly looking forward, um, and they unfortunately don't seem to stick around very long. I don't know if it's just the, the amount of effort to keep them timely that, that kills them or not, um, but I would be more than welcome to talk to anybody who has other uh, examples of similar things. Yes? Uh, so I was curious if, uh, as, as annoying as regex can be, uh, do you think it would be sensible to try to put together a document specifying how people could contribute a set of regex for a specific conference? Um, it, it might be a good idea for going forward. Ideally, Hopefully, in the future, it will be less about scraping web pages and more about receiving structured data. Uh, we seem to be more aware of that nowadays than we were when, uh, you know, when DEF CON started. Then again, like I have evidence that DEF CON is still hand editing their program or their 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 website for the schedule, uh, spaces and inconsistencies in the markup. So it's it's going to be a battle, I think, for some. Uh, Ultimately, I, I want this to be a service that I provide on behalf of the, the, the conferences. So hopefully they're incentive to, in, in, incentivized to work with me uh, without impacting what, all of the work that they put into actually throwing the conference. So there may be a restructured question. What about uh, a document for suggestions for the, the yeah, I, I will definitely be doing more of reaching out to, to conference organizers going forward. I see more people piling in, getting ready for closing. So uh, feel free to grab me sometime after closing if you want to talk further. Otherwise, check out infocondb.org and uh, shoot me any feedback through the website. Thank you.